Hey guys, Ash Fremont here. So if you've been keeping up with the series, then you know in the last video where I talked about my citizenship story, I kind of gave a precursor as to what this video is going to be about. And of course, clearly you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about the passport, how to apply, what's required. And then later on in the video, I'm going to be sharing what my process was like. So of course... I have my notes, so I'm not forgetting any important information. So this is actually episode four, the last and temporarily final video in the mini series for now. If you missed the first few videos, I talked about the TRN for the first episode. The second episode, I spoke about citizenship by descent, what's required, what's needed. And again, in the third episode where I shared my citizenship story. So if you didn't watch that, you definitely want to watch that before you watch this video, especially the citizenship story, because it kind of gives a whole precursor, um, a whole background into when I share my passport story. So go ahead and definitely watch that. Well, all the videos, of course, when you get a chance. So like most countries, you have to be a citizen of Jamaica in order to apply for a passport. So whether you were born there or you later acquired citizenship through some other means, you have to be a citizen in order to obtain a passport. Now, again, you want to what you would want to watch the previous videos where I details all about that because I'm going to be mentioning a lot of things from the previous videos. So Jamaica has four types of passports that they normally issue. So the adult regular passport for adults 18 and over, minor passports if you're under 18, and then they also have the diplomatic and the official um, passports, which is really for like authorized Jamaican diplomats, government officials who kind of, you know, represent Jamaica's interests overseas or international affairs or ministry of government but most people will pretty much stand fall under the standard excuse me adult passport and the minor passport now the benefits of having the passport is pretty much a simply a national id it ties you to the country um whether it's through citizenship or where you're from or you later acquire citizenship so it's seen as a national ID, and of course, it's a travel document. You can travel on it. Now, according to the Jamaica Observer, passport holders can travel up to 85 countries and territories visa-free, but require a visa for 141 countries, including, of course, the dense diaspora locations such as America, Canada, the UK, and the Cayman Islands. So while the Jamaican passport may not really be the strongest at all, um, it does have some benefits, okay, of course. So, for example, if you're one who travels to Jamaica often um, and you like to stay extended period of times or you like to go without a stamp of saying, oh, you can only be here for three months or six months, like they do on the foreign passports, then this will be a good case of where you would want to get the passport and travel on it if you're not one, you know, it's for the restrictions or if you're planning to stay in Jamaica like an extended period of time. So that would be one case where the passport is very beneficial to you. So the requirements are... Of course, because you have to be a citizen first, you need to show proof of citizenship. So that would be a birth certificate if you were adopted in Jamaica or you later acquire citizenship through some other means. You have to show that original or certified copy of one of those documents that applies to you. Then, of course, you need your application filled out, signed, and notarized by a JP. You need two twin identical photos. Um, of the two, only one needs to be notarized by a JP. And the same JP that notarizes your photo has to notarize your application. So make sure it's not two separate people. Then, of course, you need to submit a valid photo ID so you can choose a foreign passport or a driver's license. The fees, and we're going to talk about the fees and the processing times in a minute. And then, of course, if any part of your documentation, your name is actually different. So whether you got married, divorced, you change your name because your name can no longer hold you, whatever that might be, if that applies to you, you're going to have to show an original or certified copy of that change of name decree if any part of the application process, your name is different. So this is really for like first time applicants. Um, however, again, remember, I stressed in the previous video, if you remember me, watch, if you remember watching the citizenship video, how important it is that original documents are presented and they cannot be 
altered in any kind of way, laminated, torn, ripped, dust mites. It pretty much just needs to be as much as a pristine copy as possible. So if that's you or you have your document, but it looks altered, you're not sure if they're going to accept it, or you just simply don't know where it is, definitely go ahead and get a certified copy from the agency in which the record initially came from. So like your birth certificate, RGD, citizenship, pick a um, if you got married, divorced, change your name in whatever country that was um, that happened, you need to contact the vital records office. So the photo requirements are very peculiar. Of course, again, if you watch a citizenship video, did you watch it yet? Did I remind you guys to watch it? Of course I did. If you watch that video, you're going to see where I listed the laundry list of photo requirements that Jamaica has. They're kind of strict. And as you can see on the screen, um, I'm going to put up on the screen, you'll see the full list. And of course, you'll see the... Um, they have a, a whole chart of like what would seem as acceptable and what would not be acceptable. Please make notes of all those photo requirements. Again, if you go to a photography studio in Jamaica, they would usually have all of that down packed. So you don't have to kind of take it upon your head to figure it out. Or if you go to a foreign based photography studio, please be mindful of those requirements. And as you can see on the screen, they have requirements if you have gray hair, if you're a darker complexion, lighter complexion, if you wear glasses and so on. So just please take heed to those photography, photography um, requirements. I'm going to leave my recommendation if you do take it, um, your pictures in Jamaica, there's a guy um, I could say the man next door, but his name is Paul Graham Photos. And um, he's the one that I've used for my citizenship and my passport. And he's right next door to Pika in Kingston. And at the time, I paid four photos for 450 JM. Great quality, great service. So let's talk about the processing times. So this is when you're applying in Jamaica. So for the adult regular passport, um, in Kingston, which is where the head office is, it will take seven days. That's the longest it will take. Then at, for at a price of 6500 JM. If you're applying Mobe, it will take 14 days. Portmore, Maypen, the tax office collectors, or any of the, of the other regional offices, it may take between 11 and 14 days. And as you can see on the screen, you'll see the full layout. If you are applying overseas at your local consulate or high commissions, once PICA receives your application materials from the consulate, it can take up to 20 days upon receiving it in Kingston. So just keep that in mind. They do offer expediting services. Excuse me. However, that's not available overseas. It's only available in Kingston. Um, at, at, in Kingston, they have three days at 9,500. Next day service at 11,500. Same day service at 16,500. Of course, this is in Jamaican dollars I'm quoting. And as you can see on the screen for the other regional offices in Jamaica, they do offer some um, expediting times as well. So all passports are issued by PICA. And of course, PICA is Passport Immigration Citizenship Agency. So please make note of that. And like most other foreign passports, the standard adult passports for adults 18 and over are valid for 10 years. Minors, if you're under 18, it's five years. And you can renew your passport up to at least one year in advance before it expires. So that's something to keep in note. So, which brings us to how do you apply? So, you're probably wondering, can you apply online? And actually, you can, but only for renewals. And then there's a couple of like specifics for that. So, if you are renewing a passport, you can renew online. So, pick a road out. I think it was December 2019, where you can renew only adult passports online. So if you have a minor or any um, very special situations, you probably cannot, you cannot actually renew online. So the online process, I haven't gone through it um, personally, but I did see on Twitter that, as you can see on the screen, there's been a couple of people that actually did use the online service and they attested that it was seamless. So they were, as you can see, one was in France, I think UK, and one was in Jamaica. So the online service can be, of course, if you live in Jamaica or if you are abroad. So that's only for renewals. 
for adult passports, but the passport that you are renewing, it has to have been valid um, or issued after September 2001 because that was when those passports became machine readable. So if you have like the old time blue passport like my grandmother, you cannot renew it online. So please keep a note of that. But for more information on what the online process is, definitely go to Pickle's website. They have a whole FAQ. They also have a, um, a photo checker, a price checker, where you could kind of go ahead and like take a look at that. And I did go ahead and browse the website a bit. And it does seem user-friendly. Um, so I don't uh, see why it probably wouldn't work for you if you fit the bill to go ahead and renew that online. Now, the real ways and how you, the other ways, not the real ways, the other ways and how you can apply for your passport is in person at any pick a location island wide. They also have a Dropbox service. And of course, if you're overseas, you can apply through your local consulate or high commissions. Now, when you apply in person, um, you could bypass the whole going to a clerk if you use the Dropbox service where you kind of package everything. And I guess you have, would have to leave it in a designated area. Area. But again, for more information on the Dropbox service, definitely go ahead to Pickle's website um, for that. And of course, you could apply in person if you go to a clerk. And overseas, you can go to a local consulate. I believe you don't have to physically go in. You probably are able to mail that application into the consulate. But of course, the processing time may be a little bit more extended. So go ahead and check with your local consulate for additional processes, um, additional requirements. And please note that the processing times and the fees are going to look different depending on um, the country through the constant which you're going through. But of course, contact PICA for more information on that. Now, there is also an alternative to holding two passports. So this is only for foreign-based Jamaicans who hold two passports, like a foreign passport, and then they would hold a Jamaican passport. So there's something called unconditional landing. And what that is, is you, of course, have to make a claim to citizenship. But instead of getting a passport, a Jamaican passport, you can put a stamp, an unconditional landing stamp in your foreign passport. And what that basically does, the benefit of that is you basically are allowed to stay in Jamaica indefinitely. You can live without a visa or a permit um, or anything of that nature. So the whole restriction of you can only stay for three months or six months when they stamp your passport, it's indefinite. So that is an alternative if you really don't like to walk around with two passports, but you would still have to go ahead and apply for that. Here on the screen, this was a family friend's, this is not mine, but this was a family friend's um, unconditional landing stamp that was in her foreign passport. So that might be an option if that so um, piques your interest. But if you are Jamaican living in Jamaica and you do not hold another foreign passport, unfortunately, this does not apply to you. This is only for Jamaicans who live abroad or who holds a secondary foreign passport. So my citizenship, uh, not citizenship, my passport story was, <coughs> excuse me, guys, my passport story was, um, okay, so a month after I was in um, Jamaica for my citizenship, I ended up going back to Jamaica like a month later because my grandmother passed and that's why I went back so soon. So, of course, if you watch that video, my citizenship story, I kind of detail like the whole thing um, because it really kind of gives like a full comprehensive um, view or story to like the whole citizenship pro um, passport process. So a month after I applied for my citizenship, I was back in Jamaica again because my grandmother had passed. And this is during like Hurricane Irma time. And so while I was in Jamaica, of course, for the first part of the trip, everything was like funeral, um, family, linking up with family and things of that nature. So at some point, I think I went down like the Thursday, you know, Friday's like the night night, Saturday's like the funeral Sunday, you know, we're gathering. So it wasn't really till like Monday where I probably had like a little bit of leeway to try to get some stuff done. 
So during the trip, and as you've seen from the series, I'm a person that I like to try and kill multiple birds at one stone if possible. So that's why I decided to go ahead, since I was going back again so soon, to just go ahead and do my passport. So I made sure to walk with my citizenship decree that I would need. So after the funeral festivities kind of calmed down, I went, a friend of mine took me to the man, I keep saying the man next door, Paul Graham, the photo guy that I told you about next door to pick up um, Kingston. And he took me to get my photos done. So before I had called, before I actually showed up to Paul Graham's studio, I did call him because I remember I was just there a month before and I did my citizenship photos. So I called just to see if he still had the previous photos in the database that he could just reprint for me and I would just go ahead and pay him the money. But when I called, he didn't have them. So I was like, okay, I'll just come in. So during that week, a friend of mine took me to Paul Graham studio. I went ahead and got my photos done. And of course, he's like, what do you need? And I said, passport. So he made sure, you know, the ears were showing. And um, I still had in the photo locks from like the last time. So I got those photos, same four photos. And I think I still paid for 50 JM um, for those photos. So I had the photos and then I ended up calling my JP, which is Mr. G. Again, if you watch a citizenship video, you kind of know who some of these people are when I mention them. So I called my JP because remember the photo has to be notarized. One of the two photos needed to be notarized and the passport application. And I had got the application the previous time when I was there, I ended up picking up a couple. So I already had the application filled out before I went down to Jamaica for my grandma's funeral. So I called Mr. G, um, my JP, and he comes, I don't remember what point or what day this was, but he comes to the house and he notarizes my passport um, application and my photo, So, which was great. Then day, day, days and time is going by, and then Thursday comes, and at that point, I was already in Jamaica like a week, and I was like, oh, snap, like, I need to go to pick up because the last full business day I have was Friday, which was the following day, and then I was leaving on Saturday, so I was like, no, no, I got to go to pick up and put in this application, so my friend drops me to pick up, and we go in, I mean, I go through the security, good, good, because if you know from the previous video, at one point I had an issue getting in, so I got through the security, good, and he showed me where, or he told me which um, building to go in for the passport, because it's a separate building for a citizenship. So we go in, and then, of course, my friend can't get into the building, because they're like, if you're not doing business, you can't get in. So he goes back to the car and wait, and then I go in and wait. So this whole process was actually very seamless compared to the citizenship. I mean, the citizenship was really, it was kind of seamless, but I had some hiccups. Go ahead and watch that video. So I went inside. I didn't have to wait long. Um, and then I got to see a clerk. I really don't remember how long I was waiting, but I didn't get to wait long. I didn't have to wait long at all. So I got to see a clerk, had in her my materials. Again, I had my U.S. passport. I had my... What else did I have? I had my citizenship decree. I had my fees um, and my photo and application notarized. Handed that in. They made a photocopy and she sent me to the cashier to pay. So, of course, I had to do next day service because that was the only other business day I had left. So I had to pay you know, the expediting fee to do it next day. And I didn't bother wanting to have my uncle pick it up for me or anything of that nature because I'm like, from the time I was in Jamaica and I knew, like, I could have got this done. So there was, for me, no point in trying to have somebody else pick it up for me. So I went to the cashier. I paid to her do next day service. And she made sure to tell me, make sure I come back by tomorrow. I think it was either by 2 or 3 um, and then this is an interesting thing between like the U.S. passport and a Jamaican passport. Well, there's a couple of differences. But one of the differences is that on the Jamaican passport, your occupation is listed. It's also you think you fill that out on the passport application, too. But at the cashier, you know, she double checked my occupation and we kind of found like the next closest thing um, to my occupation because that's on it. They don't verify you know, or ask to see a business card or an ID, but that was just like, you know, a cool difference. And then so she told, I paid, got my receipts, I come back tomorrow by at a certain time. 
And then I was good to go. And I think at that point, I did go to the citizenship area to see Miss Anglin. And Miss Anglin, if you watch the previous video, she was the clerk that processed my citizenship paper for me. So I just went up there just to kind of see if she was there. And she was. And I was just saying hi and she was like you're still here and I said no I left um you know like no I left from that same day but I came back because my grandmother dropped out so she was like oh condolences and I was like yeah I'm getting I'm going I'm doing the passport so she's like okay that's good um and then that was that so I just kind of went up there just to say hi so I leave and I put in the application and then now Friday comes so during this trip, my sister went to RGD to get a copy of her birth certificate. So it wasn't going to be ready while she was still in town. So I was going to be the one to pick it up for her because my travel dates, I was there later than everybody else. So Friday comes and her birth certificate is ready. And she had worked out with my uncle, the same uncle from the previous video, that he would pick me up and take me to RGD, which is the downtown Kingston location. Um, so it's like after 12 and I'm on the, ver I'm sitting at the veranda waiting and I don't hear from my uncle because remember, this is my last full business day. I had to go to RGD, which is downtown Kingston. Then I also had to go to pick up, um, to pick up my passport. And so government offices in Jamaica, they're not necessarily like the ones here in terms of the, um, times. Sometimes, a lot of the times here, government um, or business offices close maybe like five or six um, in the States. In Jamaica, they close maybe like at four, at three, at two. It really just depends on the day um, and what was going on. And on top of that, it was a Friday. So she had already worked out for my uncle for my uncle to pick me up. And I also had to have a notarized letter to state that, yes, I can pick up her birth certificate. So we had got that letter done previously in the week. And my JP did notarize that as well. So I'm I, after 12 some time, I'm sitting on the veranda and I'm waiting again. Like, <laughs> what's going on? I don't see my uncle. I don't hear from him. And I'm like, I got to go. And I don't remember, as I said, what time RGZ closed, but time is going. And this is my last day to pick up everything before I leave the next day. So don't hear from my uncle. I call my friend. Don't get an answer. So I was like, you know, I'm going to call Mrs. Smith. So Mrs. Smith is one of my taxi guys that I met in the previous trip when I was there. I didn't mention that in the video, but I met him some point during the trip. And so I had his number. And just because I was just there the month before, he still remembered me. And I called him and I'm like, Mrs. Smith, I need you to pick me up from my house. Um, I need you to take me to RGD. Um, wait for me. Then we need to go to Pika, wait for me, and then we need to drop me home. How much will that cost and how long do you get here? So he was charging me $2,800, um, which is really a really good price. Because if I was to sit and think, okay, if I'm back here in Miami and I try to catch an Uber or a Lyft or a taxi just to go downtown, that price... Yeah, it was a great price for all that go here, go there, wait and everything. So he wasn't able to pick me up because I think he was picking up his child from school or something like there. But he's like, you know what? He's going to call me back because he's going to try to see if he could get somebody else. So a few minutes later, Mrs. Smith calls me back and he's like, OK, Mendez is going to come pick you up. It's 15 minutes. OK. And I was like, that's perfect. So I'm like, OK, great. But I said, did you tell Mr. Mendez exactly where I needed to go and the same price and he's like yes I'm like okay just checking because I don't want Mr. Smith quoting me one price and now Mr. Mendez to try to buck up the price or anything like that so that wasn't the case so I get my purse and everything together make sure I had the documents to show to collect the doc um my receipts and letter to show to collect the documents and my cousin so one of my cousins that lived there was at work. And then there was another cousin that came in town the night before. So he was in there sleeping, he was napping. So I hate waking up people when they're sleeping, but I didn't want him to wake up knowing that before he went to sleep, me and him is in the house, good, good. And he's going to wake up and I'm like, disappear. Um, so I was like, I was trying to wake him up. And I was like, I'm not here now. 
And you know when you kind of like sleeping, but then someone's waking you up and you're kind of cognizant, but not really. So I heard him say like, okay, mm -hmm. so I was like, all right, I just said I'm not here. And I didn't tell him where and where I was going. So I go outside and wait for Mr. Mendez. And as you can see by the picture, this was exactly like when I was waiting. Keep in mind of like, I look simple. I'm not flashy, everything, because that's important in a little bit later. So Mendez comes and we're in a taxi, you know, we're chit chatting and stuff. And my sister calls me just to check on like, what's the status and uncle come, you know, time is creeping. So I was like, no, I'm in a taxi. So she's getting excited, you know, now that I'm in the taxi. And so she was just like, oh, where are you? And at, luckily at that point, um, I was actually, we were driving by where my uncle actually lives. So I knew where I was. So she was like, how much longer do you get there? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I only been to RGD like once before. Like, I don't know the roads like that. So she's like, you know, keep her posted because, you know, she's a little excited. I'm in a taxi, maybe because I'm in a taxi by myself or what have you. So if you watched the previous video, I told you this taxi fiasco was going to come up again. And it still is coming up again in the story. So we get to RGD. Um, I go inside. I'm in the line waiting to get to the front um, to see the clerk. My phone rings and I'm like, hello. My cousin's like, where are you? This is the one that was at work. And the clerk is like, miss, miss, you can't be on the phone. So I'm like, I'll call you back. And I hang up. I eventually get to the counter, handed her the notarized letter. And I think my sister's receipt to pick up the birth certificate and then I had to wait and I went back in the hallway sorry I went back in the hallway to call back my cousin <laughs> I call him back and he's like where are you I'm like I'm at RGD downtown how'd you get downtown and I'm like I took a taxi oh then that was like a, a hoopla so then he was just like, oh, you know, I could have put like the money that I used for the taxi. I could have put the gas in his car and then just drive the car, you know, to RGD. And I'm like, Bedrin, like, are you really telling me this right now? Like, I don't know the roads to go even downtown. Like, I know how to get to certain places in Jamaica, but not like so far out from where we live so i'm just like that is that don't even make no sense um and at that point when i'm like waiting to get a ride and time is going i'm not thinking about to try to come take your car and figure out the roads like that was not gonna happen and at that point i at that point in time i didn't really drive in jamaica before really so that was like not gonna work i'm like be realistic so he was like, oh, um, my JP was at the house coming to look for me. And that's when they realized, like, I wasn't there. So my JP was supposed to come check me in the morning that day um, to handle some some paperwork, not about my passport, some other stuff. And he told me he was coming in the morning. And, of course, like the cultural side of some Jamaicans, they don't show up on time. And I had to go. Like, I went on my JP, I went on my uncle, and I got to go pick up these documents, and I can't see or hear from nobody. So, um, so that's when my JP was at the house looking for me. So my uncle, my cousin is like, okay, well, be careful and stuff like that. Go back in the office, get my sister's birth certificate. And then as I'm walking out, I call Mr. Mendez for him to like come back and pull around to meet me outside. FYI, nobody bothers me. Nobody's like, psst, 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 beg y'all more know. Like nothing like that. So we go in a car and I'm like worried, not really worried, but I'm just like, are we going to make it to pick up on time? Um, because I don't remember what time it was, but it was getting close. And at this point, the school children is out from school and they look so cute in their little uniforms and, you know, traffic is building up. So Mr. Mendez is like, yeah, you'll, you'll, you know, we'll make it. So at this point, my friend calls me back. Then my dad calls me and, you know, he's reminding me to pick up my sister's birth certificate. And I'm like, yeah. You know, I got it. And he's like, oh, who took you, Lion? And I'm like, Lion is my cousin from the previous video. And I was just like, no, I'm in a taxi. Oh, you take taxi, go downtown. And I'm just like, at this point, yes. But he, I don't think he was, like, excited, like, you know, nervous for me. But I think he was just like, what? You like, you know, you go take taxi. I don't know. But this was now, like, another person. Like, oh, you go take taxi and go downtown. So he was just like, all right. And, you know, be careful. And then whatnot. So I make it to Pika 
on time, luckily. I don't have to go through the guard because it's like a separate door, I guess, where you have to go through to maybe pick up um, your passport or any documents. So I had the receipt and I literally was in and out in probably like less than a minute. No waiting. It was super fast. And I don't know if it was because I was going close to the time where they closed or what. But this whole process of generally the passport application was seamless. So I handed her the receipt. She gives me my passport. Everything's good. And outside there's like the guy who is selling, you know, passport covers. And I think I bought this one for like 200 JM. And so to like, you know, put over my passport. So I get back home. Everything's good. I'm, a, I'm happy because I was able to get everything done. Um, despite at first, like, how am I going to get there and the waiting process? So I get back home and my two cousins, you know, they're like, oh, you left, especially the one that was sleeping. He's like, oh, you left. You didn't tell me. And I'm like, I tried to wake you up to let you know, because exactly what I thought was going to happen was exactly what happened. And he was like, oh, you know, you're in a foreign country. Uh, I'm like, am I? I mean, I am, but you know what I mean? Um, and he was just like, you're a young girl. And he's like, I don't trust nobody. So, I mean, ultimately, like, I appreciate all the concerns um, and stuff like that. And I, my cousins are like my older brothers, you know, because I don't have any brothers. So I really do appreciate the concern. But I'm just like, guys, like, I'm okay. I'm still here. Nothing happened to me. Um, I did try to wake you up. And let him know, like, I wasn't here. But, you know, they just really was concerned about my safety. And I get it because I'm not going to be oblivious to, like, what happens, you know, to sometimes to foreigners or what happens, you know, some unfortunately sometimes to someone, a taxi man. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be, you know, oblivious to, like, what actually happens. But, like... I'm not trying to say I'm like the original Gargon or anything like that, but I know how to handle myself. And as you've seen from the picture, that's why I said, keep a note, I wasn't flashy or anything like that. And nobody bothered me no time at all. So I was able to get everything done. Next day, I leave and I'm back home. And that was pretty much my passport whole story and saga. But... I did need to mention this part. The aunt who was questioning me about citizenship in the previous video, some point way later, I tell her, I, you know, about like, I got the passport, took a taxi. And she's like, God did spare your life. And I'm just like, God spared my life because I took a taxi to go pick up some documents. I'm like, really? So again, I'm not trying to be oblivious to the situations that happen but i'm like god spare my life like as if i was literally in a shootout and i made it back okay and and safe and sound like i literally just went to go pick up some documents in a taxi i chartered a taxi so i'm not in a taxi we have to itch up like sardine i chartered a taxi where it's just me and i know these people i have their number i can always pick up the phone and call if something happens but she was like god did spare your life and i'm just like Okay, thank you guys <laughs> for the concern, but this extraness, I'm just like, okay. So this is why I said in a previous video that this whole taxi fiasco comes up again. But that was pretty much, as I said, my passport story. It was a very seamless um it was a very seamless process in getting it all done. I did forget to mention that if you are renewing your passport, um not online, but at any one of the locations in Pico or so, there is a way to sort of bypass some of the processes. So if you are renewing your passport, um, I don't think you may not have to show a birth certificate or a citizenship decree because you already previously held a passport. And you may not have to um, get either a photo or the application notarized. But double check Pickle's website for all the information on that. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys, this is my passport that I picked up um, when I got it. Well, this cover, my cousin from the TRN video, she bought this for me after the fact. But this is really <laughs> what it looks like. And then, you know, my information, I'm trying to cover it. 
I'll put a picture up. But this is what it looks like. So it's valid for 10 years. So guys, that is all about passport, how to apply, what is required. And of course, again, my personal story on the application process. I do hope all this information has been useful or beneficial to you in some type of way. If it has, and if any of the videos throughout the series has, please go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and share. And of course, as always, please do share the wealth with somebody else who else who will find this information beneficial. As always, you can link up with me online everywhere at Ashimon. And until next time, have a good day and I hope you enjoy the series.